your typical sterile technology office park building until a scientist and an artist collaborated to turn this advanced technology lab for building the next generation of computing into an art museum to help inspire the innovation. We have created a space where there's no edge between the hardware, the art, the architecture, the scientist, and nature itself through the windows. Forrest Stearns, a Google artist in residence, and Eric Lucero, the Google engineer charged with developing its first quantum AI computer, have a mutual fascination with art and science. I think a lot of the work that um, I've done throughout my career has been to try to capture what I think are beautiful things that we make in electrical engineering and in physics. An accomplished photographer as well as a scientist, Lucero offered Stearns an artist in residency at Google Quantum AI after seeing Stearns' Draw Everywhere work imprinted on satellites in space. Having figured out how to make the largest art exhibit in space, put the light bulb of let's put art on technological things to amplify humanity. So you asked him, what is quantum computing? I asked Eric, what is quantum computing? And instead of sending me a white paper, he sent me his gorgeous portfolio of photographs of the quantum computers. Since this next generation of computing relies more on the nature of physics than mathematic computation like existing computers, quantum computing's connection with nature became the unifying theme for the art everywhere, from the lobby sculptures of some of the hardware and 3D installations in the company's cafe to wrapping the quantum computers themselves in art. The quantum computer to me looked like a beer keg. <laughs> we started with Yosemite. So it's lovely to experience flat, and then it's a completely different experience when you see it adorning a quantum computer. And I feel like that was when, I don't know, I get chills thinking about having all these machines kind of like hugged by this art. Chill is the operative term here, since the chandelier-like guts of the quantum computer need to be kept running at more than 400 degrees below zero inside these refrigerated containers called cryostats. We have 16 artists internationally. Some of them are traditional oil painters. Some of them are digital artists. We have craftsmen that work in metal, and we have sculptors that work in 3D. My name is Ravis Henry. I'm a park ranger at Canyon de Chez National Monument. Park ranger Ravis Henry is also an accomplished Navajo artisan jewelry maker. Stearns and Lucero discovered him and his work while in the Southwest exploring national parks for the art project's creative exchange. He does his work in metal craft. It is silver and copper. We take this piece and it goes from its local materials all the way to a quantum cryostat wrapped around within the scientific endeavor. I actually had the opportunity to paint this mural that you see behind us. I basically finished my day working in the lab, you know, changing my, my paint clothes and grab a paintbrush with Forrest and, and finish the mural. Art is very experiential and we are creating an experience in here where people have an inspiration to show up and be great. I mean, everything with vibrant color in here really just helps, I think, mm -hmm. express our creative side in here and it really just keeps the lab in a creative thinking space just because um, when stuff is just too technical and it's just basic, black and white, it really closes off your mind. Would you hang the Galapagos in your living room? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, I definitely throw yeah. that over uh, we, my we, kitchen table. Please. Yeah, we asked for if we could actually have one in any of these, so, or a copy of it. It's important to note that there's real humans that are working on these projects and we care deeply about the places that we live, where we've come from, and the planet that we live on. And I believe these, these research tools are what are going to help us actually stay here and protect our Earth. The intersection of art and technology is as old and rich as Leonardo da Vinci and as American as the 19th century painter Samuel Morse. In addition to his anatomy portraits, he developed the first telegraph and Morse code. His first electronic message? What hath God wrought? Sometimes there's a perception of a love-hate relationship between art, science, and technology. Mm. Do you think that's misinterpreted? I would challenge that it exists. In what way? I see so much about the way that uh, those things, to me, are one and the same. When you have uh, the opportunity to, to do great science, there's just an opportunity of looking at it with a particular perspective that can make it look artistic. I am celebrating the fact that quantum physics is hard and it's way out here. And when, when something is way out here, it takes art to bring it back to right here.
For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Mike Saray in Goleta, California.